All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, this is going to be the lecture for section 2.2, the limit of a function. Uh, so uh, a lot of what's going to be coming up in uh, calculus is going to really require uh, an, us to have some form of knowledge about uh, a limit. OK, um, we're not going to get as close to a bona fide mathematical definition, but we're going to get really close to one. We're going to be using a lot of our intuitiveness uh, to to sort of develop a working definition for a limit, at least as best as possible. OK, the best way I'm going to sort of uh, show you guys how to do this is we're just going to go ahead and jump into example. OK, so let's consider this function right here, uh, x squared minus 16 divided by x minus four. So the first thing I want to do is I want to just go ahead and determine the domain. And if you guys remember from uh, pre-calc, your domain for this is going to be negative infinity to four union four to infinity. OK, uh, note that this set is leaving out the value x equal four. And the reason why is because if we plug x equal 4 into our function, we're going to be dividing by 0. That's a bad thing. We can't have that. OK? <clears throat> um, so for part b, what I want to do is I want to start uh, getting values that are getting closer and closer to 4. I can't plug in 4 to our function, but I can analyze what's happening when we get really close to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and open up Desmos. Uh, Desmos is going to be an online calculator. It works on your phone. So it's just desmos.com. There's also links to it uh, on the Canvas page. OK. Uh, and I'm just going to go ahead and graph the function. OK. So if I go ahead and graph it, here it is. This is our graph right here. OK. And what I want to do is specifically, I want to get closer to my value x equal 4. OK. So that's this point right here. Now, if you notice, uh, according to Desmos, our function is undefined, OK? But what I want to do, like I said, I want to get closer to my x equal 4 value, OK, from the left and from the right, OK? So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, designate a couple of x values, OK? So this grayed out one, this is where I want my 4. That's the value that I want to get to, right? But I'm going to do uh, uh, 4.5. 4.4, 4.3, 4.2, And then from uh, the left, I'm going to do the same thing. 3.5, 3.6, 3.7, 3.8, 3.9, 3.10, 3.11, 3.12, 3.13, 3.14, 3.15, 3.16, 3.17, 3.18, 3.19, 3.20, 3.21, 3.22, 3.23, 3.24, 
8.1. So it's, a, it's evaluating the values for our function at these points. So let me go ahead and put our notes back in plain view here. Uh, at four, it's undefined. Okay, because we can't plug in four, right? However, the, no, the numbers around it give us a direction. What's happening is it's getting closer and closer to four, right? F of X uh, is approaching the value uh, Y equal eight. So if you guys notice, as our X values get closer to four, our Y values get closer to something. Right, And we've noticed by calculations here that it's getting closer to eight, even though it's undefined. Okay, let's go ahead and take another uh, function, okay? Let's take this function right here. F of X is equal to one divided by one plus E to the one over X. Okay, so that one over X is in the X bar, okay? First thing, what is our domain? The domain for this is negative infinity to zero, union zero to infinity, okay? Again, if we plug in zero uh, into that denominator in that exponent, uh, it's gonna give us an undefined, okay? So we're gonna do the same thing now. We know that we can't plug in zero because that's gonna give us, uh, does not exist, right? It's going to give us an undefined. But we can still get closer and closer to zero and see what happens, right? So I'm going to do uh, negative 0 0.5, negative 0 0.4, negative 0 0.3, negative 0 0.2, negative 0 0.1, and then 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. So just as above. <laughs> our x values are approaching zero from the negative and from the positive. So let's see what happens in this case, okay? Uh, let's go ahead and go back to Desmos. Uh, I am going to turn off this function and turn on the next one. And now I'm going to go ahead and delete these values. Okay, I'm gonna change this to g of x1. Here's g of x. Use our second function, okay? <clears throat> I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm going to approach zero and I'm gonna find some values so we can plug into uh, our table here, okay? Negative 0.5, negative 0.4, negative 0.3, negative 0.2, negative 0.1, okay? So in this case, we got some values. So this is going to be what a 0.88 according to our calculator, 0 0.92, 0 0.96, 0 0.993, 0 0.999. Okay, let's go ahead and do the same thing from the other end. So 0.1. 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, okay. So let's go ahead and copy that into our notes. So 0.1 is gonna be, let's, I'm gonna go ahead and call this very small. I think it's gonna be 0 0.00004, 0 0.2 is 0 0.0069, 0.3 is 0 0.034, 0 0.075, and then our last point is 0.119. Okay, let's go ahead, bring up our notes fully again. Okay, so same idea. Look what happens. As our x values get closer to zero, what we're trying to look for, what we're trying to do is see what happens to our Y values. Are they doing something special? 
And in this case, if you guys look, the uh, negative side, as we approach it from the negative side, it's heading to one. But our positive side, as we approach it from the positive end, it's heading to zero, right? So what happens to, uh, to our function as our x value is closer to zero, right? We have no decision here. This is what we call an undefined here. Okay. So notice what we're trying to do here. We're out, we're trying to look at what's happening to our y value depending on what our x values are trying to do. Okay. This is the big idea behind. Uh, the limit of a function, okay? So this is the very first thing we're gonna define for the class. Uh, if you have a function f, okay? And f of x gets, so my f of x or my y values are getting closer to a value L as x gets sufficiently close to a value A, then we have this phrase right here. Then the limit of f of x as x approaches a is equal to l, okay? And we denote it this way, okay? What does that mean? Like I said, in the syllabus, I like pictures. So suppose it's exactly what we're doing in the example, actually. This is my x-axis. This is my y-axis. Let's say you had a function, f of x, okay? And let's say you wanted to approach a value a. We're trying to get closer to this value right here from both the bottom and the top, okay? This value is heading toward a specific y value. This x value is heading toward a specific y value L, okay? As we approach it this way and as we approach it this way, okay? That means it's doing the same thing on the y-axis. So whenever this happens, we say that the limit of f of x as x approaches a is equal to a value l, okay? So what comes up next here in, your, uh, in the online notes is a quick check. I'm going to let you guys uh, in your groups, in your discussions, uh, go ahead and finish this up. Uh, post any concerns you have. I will be looking at them. Uh, your classmates will also be looking at them, okay? But now that we have an intuitive idea of the definition of a limit, okay, uh, we're gonna refine it a little more, okay, to uh, get us a little bit more of a working definition, basically grabbing our intuition and putting it down on paper, okay? Two things that we've already done. Uh, I want everybody to look at this right here. It looks like a limit with the exception of, there's a negative on this side, and then there's this one that has a positive on this side, okay? This is what we call the one-handed limits, okay? The negative side, the negative one, okay, is what we call the left-handed or the negative limit, okay? And then the one with the positive on it is the one we call that the positive limit or the right-handed limit, okay? That's basically approaching our x equal a value from the left, and from the right, they're both separate, okay? We can look at them separate, okay? The very first big theorem that we're gonna learn here is that the limit of a function exists only if both the left-handed limit and the right-handed limit are equal, okay? What does that mean? A limit exists if and only if the limit as x approaches a from the positive side of f of x has to equal has to equal the limit as x approaches a from the negative side of f of x. And whatever those two values are is going to be equal to the limit. I like to call it x equal a. I like to call this the flat limit because it doesn't have a positive or a negative of f of x. OK, so let's go ahead and practice some of these. Let me give you guys a bit of an example here. OK. Just going to try to find the uh, the limits based on this graph. Okay, 
So let's go ahead and start with the first column. As x approaches 3 from the positive, so negative 3 from the positive. So we are trying to get closer and closer to this value right here, negative 3. OK? So as we approach negative 3 from the positive, that's up there. It looks like it's going to be around 3, right? So let's go ahead and call that 3. OK? As we approach it from the negative end, that's down here. That's going to be negative 4. OK? Since these two limits are not equal, then the flat limit does not exist. Remember from the theorem above that they both have to be equal in order for the flat limit to exist, OK? So the last thing I want to do here is define to find uh, g of negative 3. This does also not exist. Notice that both the uh, notice that both those endpoints are empty. So at negative 3, this function does, is not defined. OK, let's go on and do the middle column. x equal 2 from the positive. We want to look at the limit as x equal 2 from the positive. So this is this point right here. OK, if you look from the positive end, that is approaching 1. My y values are approaching 1. If you look at it from the negative side, they're also approaching 1. Since the positive limit and the negative limit are the same, the flat limit without the positive or the negative is also equal to 1. Okay. Again, note that g of 2, since it is an open circle, this is does not exist. It is not defined there. OK, so this is one of the ones where both the left and the right limit are actually equal. So and therefore, it has a solid flat limit. OK. Third column. Uh, we are trying to approach x equals 0. So this point right here, let me get rid of that one, from the positive, from the negative, and it's supposed to be that is my bad. There's not supposed to be a negative there. And then we're going to find the flat limit. So if you take a look at um, as x approaches 0 from the positive, that is heading toward 2. My y values are heading toward 2. As x approaches 0 from the negative, same thing. This is approaching 2. Since both of these are equal, our flat limit is equal as well. OK? And in this case, my function is actually defined here. This is actually 2. OK? So this is the process, uh, at least the intuitive process, for how to find a limit. OK? Um, let's go ahead and scroll down. So now that we have uh, the definition of a left and right-handed limit, uh, we can also use this, depending on um, uh, this this will be used a lot more in chapter three once we get there. Uh, we're going to be able to discuss uh, asymptotes and specifically use the limits to uh, label its behavior. So a new definition uh, is this one right here. So the positive or the negative, uh, the positive or the negative that's below the limit, uh, that's not going to be. Uh, that's not sort of like the star of the show in this definition. It's more of the positive infinity and the negative infinity um, that are here. Okay, we say that the limit uh, of x approaching a, whether it be positive or negative, of f of x is equal to infinity if the values of f of x increase without bound. Basically, they blow up; they just shoot up to the sky. Okay. And we say that the limit as x approaches a of f of x is negative infinity if the values of f of x decrease without bound. So if they take a nosedive, basically. Okay. Um, same rule applies. Okay. If both the left-handed and the right-handed limits are equal, then they must also be equal to 
the flat limit, okay? So let's go ahead and do an example here. So let's go ahead and take this function right here. Uh, if you guys remember uh, your pre-calc, this is going to be the double swoosh. There's going to be an asymptote at plus two. Go ahead, put the asymptote at plus two. Okay, and it's been shift over to uh, by three. So here, the two asymptotes. Our graph is going to look something like this. It's going to have, like I said, the double swoosh. It shoots down that way, and it does this. Okay, so again. Let's take a look at the limit as x approaches 3 from the positive. So we are looking at this point right here, this x value right here. So if you take a look at what's happening to the y values, OK, so here's my y values. They are shooting upwards. So the limit for this is positive infinity, right? Because The y values increase without bound. They just shoot straight upward. Okay. If we take a look at the same thing, but in the negative from the negative direction. So if we look at the limit as x approaches three from the negative direction, those go to negative infinity, right? For the exact same reason, except the reverse, because because the y values nose dive. Okay. Same idea as before, since both the positive limit and the negative limit are not equal, the flat limit, the one without the positive or the negative, is it does not exist. They do not match up. Okay. Let's go ahead and take a look at another example here. Okay. Uh, same kind of problem, except if we take a function, this one has a square in it. So if you guys remember from pre-calc again, there's an asymptote here. And then there's an asymptote here. This kind of graph is a double swoosh, but both the swooshes end up going in the same direction. And that's sort of a hint here. So this end jumps down that way, and this end jumps down this way because of this negative that's right here. It's going to be a flipped graph. Okay. So now let's go ahead and do the same thing, right? The limit as x approaches 3 from the positive end, if we take a look at this, negative infinity. Okay. Because The y values nose that they go straight downward, right? So like I said, we want to approach x equal three from the positive side, right? They nose dive. Okay. Same thing if we take a look at it from the negative side. This is also going to be negative infinity. Okay, because of the same reason, because the y values nose dive. They just go straight down. However, because the positive and negative limit are equal, the limit here is negative infinity. OK. There is a small little note here that I need to uh, specify. Uh, by the definition of a limit, OK, an infinite limit does not exist, OK? Uh, if you remember the definition of a limit, it has to uh, approach a specific y value. It has, it has to, uh, it has to uh, approach a specific value L. Negative infinity is not a value. Okay, so by, by definition, an infinite limit does not exist. However, we can use the language to do exactly this. 
we can use it to describe a function's behavior. Okay, this is how we actually get the definition for an asymptote. Okay, so a vertical asymptote uh, is defined when there is an infinite limit at x equal a, whether it be the positive one, the negative one, or the flat one. Okay, any one of these three uh, is considered a vertical asymptote whenever they happen. Okay. Uh, there's a quick check, too, for everybody to do uh, through the discussions. And after that, we have lecture questions. Uh, if there are any questions about this material, uh, you are more than welcome to uh, repeat this video. Uh, if not, if there are any more questions, uh, please visit me at my uh, Zoom hours. I'll be posting those very shortly. Okay? Thank you. I'll see you guys around.